Do you want to know how to set up your team on a match day? Today we'll take you through the best seven aside formations to help you set your team up every Sunday for more success. Stay tuned. Hi everyone, Catalan Ben here. Today we're going to take you through the top seven aside formations and how to coach them to your players. Here's just three of my favourites. Formation number one is the 2 1 3 or the Pentagon formation. This setup has a really good balance to it. It has two defensive players, lots of width, and two central players who can score goals from midfield and attacking areas. This is quite an attack minded setup, so it doesn't ask too much of the wingers in terms of recovery runs and defensive responsibilities. However, it does mean that the midfield player will have a big job to do in terms of supporting his attackers and also supporting his defenders. The defensive responsibilities do lie with the wingers to tuck in when out of possession, and this can go from a really strong attacking formation to make sure you've got loads of width, provide crosses into the box, and really cause problems for the other team. As soon as you lose the ball though, all you have to do is tuck those wingers in back towards the central area and make sure you are cutting out forward passes through the centre of the pitch. As with any formation that really stretches and provides width when you're in possession, it can pose a risk and be exposed down the middle of the pitch sometimes if you lose the ball. So you have to make sure that those wingers are doing that job to tuck in when you lose possession. If they don't tuck back in, you will find that your midfielder will be exposed or even your centre backs will be exposed and that will mean that counter attacks are very, very dangerous against you. Your central midfield player is crucial to this system working. Try to use a player who understands the importance of defending or enjoys defending to prevent being caught out on the counter attack. Because you use the pentagon formation in possession, it does offer you a lot of triangles. And if you look at the diagram here, it offers triangles in several different areas, from central areas, attacking areas, defending areas, and wide areas. It's a really, really solid possession system. Formation number two is the 2-2-2. Two, two, two. This formation is a very solid formation if played correctly. I'd recommend this for a team who has good passing players and good skillful players in the centre of the pitch. You don't need big, strong, athletic players to make the system work, but you do need players who understand the importance of linking up and playing in pairs and partnerships. Most of your attacks will come from central areas, so it's not really a system that employs crosses or that has to put an emphasis on wide play. If you often find yourself exposed when you lose the ball, this could be a formation that would suit your team perfectly. It's very difficult to counter-attack against, and as long as players are playing in the right areas at the right time, it can be very, very difficult for the other team to break through, especially in central areas. This formation does still offer a lot of flexibility, but if you move your players, I would recommend then trying to move them in those pairs and partnerships. So say, for instance, your back two players, your most defensive players, are playing well together. You want to move them into a more attacking area of the pitch. I would move both players forward into the midfield or both players forward to the attacking area. I wouldn't chop and change because as the partnerships change, you will lose fluidity and that will probably cause you more problems than it solves. As a good reference point, I like to use the goal post as a nice width between your two central players when they lose the ball or when the ball goes out of play. Make sure that your kids understand that when they lose the ball, if they reset within the width of the goal post or to the same width of the goal post, they will make sure they are not too wide. Be careful not to refer to the central midfielders as left midfield or right midfield. Yes, you're trying to understand which side of the pitch the kids will play on, but think about it from a child's point of view. When they're playing on FIFA and they select a left midfielder, he's out near the touchline. When they select a right midfielder, he's out near the subs bench. So make sure that they understand they are playing in central areas. And if they're going to make angles for passes and they're going to try and be available for the ball, they do not want to get stretched too wide and too far away from the centre of the pitch. In training sessions, I like to play small-sided games, but with those partnerships intact. So I'll set up my two midfield players, I'll make sure they understand they're playing in a partnership, and then during the game, I will stop and freeze players. In that freeze point, what I then do is check the distance between the left player and the right player. The central players have got to be the right distance apart. So by stopping the game and just giving a little snapshot to the kids, it helps them understand how far away they should be or how close they should be to their partner. If those gaps get too big between your partnerships, it ceases to be a pair. And that's when the gaps between will be too big, too easy for opposing teams to cut through the middle. Formation number three is the Christmas tree formation, or the three, two, one formation. This shape is my personal favorite, but it's vital that you have the right personnel to play this shape. The back three offers great width to play out from the back. The two central midfield players offer real strength in the center of the park. And they don't have to occupy the wide areas because the full backs can do that job by pushing forward. The most difficult role to play in this system is the striker. The striker can get caught quite isolated sometimes, so they must make angles to receive and make sure the ball can get into their feet. They must work hard to win the ball back when they lose possession and make sure they occupy the centre of the pitch and keep the centre-backs as busy as possible. 
These wide players do have license to get forwards, but they must understand the importance of getting goal side and back behind the ball when you lose possession. They can become wide midfielders or even wide attackers. But when you lose the ball, it's important they remember their role is still as a wide defender. You have to get back, you have to recover and get goal side of the ball. If they don't do that, your centre back will become very isolated and vulnerable to counter attacks. Before dismissing a new formation that you're trying, experiment with different players in every single role. You'll be surprised how many players can pull off different areas of the pitch, can play central and can play wide, and you'll be very, very surprised how a formation can look great with the right players in the right roles and can look very, very poor just by changing one or two players around. So make sure every player gets a chance to play in every role in that new formation. Try not to change formation during the match. You might find that a formation isn't working quite as you'd hoped for, but by changing shape during the match, you can easily confuse players and they'll start to unravel some of the hard work that you've done in training on your new shape. If you're trying to get a new formation to work, try arranging a few friendly games, give the kids a chance to play in different roles and try out that new shape, but in a pressure-free game. So those were my three favourite seven-a-side formations. Be aware that all these shapes rely on kids really knowing their roles. So get the kids around the tactics board and question them. Make sure kids understand their roles by asking questions of the whole team and of individuals. Who plays in the wide area? What do we do when the keeper gets the ball? What do we do when we lose possession? Where do I want my central players to be? What's the attacker's role? All these kind of questions can make sure that kids really are understanding their jobs. It's more important to do that than just tell players where they are playing. It's okay for a kid to understand that's the part of the pitch you want him to stand in at kickoff. But what happens when possession changes? What happens when you get the ball back? What happens when your keeper has got the ball? Make sure your kids understand all those things at the same time. By asking questions, you're checking understanding. If you're not doing that, don't be surprised when a kid is put into a role and doesn't know how to do it. If you'd like to see more videos on tactical and shape work, maybe for nine or 11 aside football, please let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like and share this video with anybody who you think might find it useful, any football managers out there. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great content coming soon, and I'll see you next time.